Okay. So I'll take it from the start here. So where you get your models is up to you. Um, I use Desktop Hero quite a bit because they do have free options in here. Um, they don't have a lot of free options, but they have some free options. But let's say you've gotten it, you've made this, and you've downloaded it. So once you've downloaded your model, you would then have an STL, which I've named Lucy here. Now, if I open up Lucy, I'll open her up in 3D Builder here real quick. You can see here she is. Okay, well, okay. one thing, when you leave the uh, application that you were in there, it paused the stream. Oh, okay. So it's not letting us see. We're staying there in, um, in your browser, and it just mm -hmm. says stream is paused. Okay, let me do... Can I just do my... Oh, let me stream my second screen instead of the application. And that okay. way it should always be live. All right, that'll work. That'll work. Cool. Okay. So we've got Lucy here, but she is not ready to go into Tabletop Simulator. And it's obvious that she's not ready because if we look at her file size, it's 20 megabytes. Um, as a frame of reference, Tabletop Simulator won't ex accept a OBJ or won't accept a model bigger than two megabytes. Um, there's a tiny bit of wiggle room on that, but I mean a tiny, tiny bit, like a, like a hundred kilobytes wiggle room. It's real small. So we have to take Lucy and we have to uh, get her ready for uh, for tabletop sim. So the program I use is Blender. You've probably heard a bunch about it. It is infinitely deep. I know the I know like the surface of Blender. Like I don't know much about it comparative to the people who are experts at it. But I'm working at it. So what we do is is we open up Blender. We go to File, and we would go New, General. And when we do a new general file, it opens up and it starts us with a cube, which we don't actually need. So I will just go ahead and select the cube. You can see it over here in the selections menu. Select it and hit the delete button and away it goes. Okay. Now here's where we get to the fun, but there's a couple things we want to do first. So, oh, somebody else joined. Hey, hello. Hello. Okay, hey. So if you've made it this far, we haven't missed anything. I have a model, and I'm about to show people what to do with it in Blender. So, Okay, cool. All right. So the first thing we want to do is, is we want to get the units of our scene correct, right? So what we do is, is we go over here to the right-hand side where all these tabs are, and you don't need to know what they all do. But if we look at this particular one, it says Scene Properties. And the first thing we see is Units, and this is important. Now, because Tabletop Simulator was built by monsters, um, the entire system is in, in Imperial units. And you would think oh, cool. if we change if we change this to Imperial units, that would like mesh up well. It doesn't. Mm. So what I do is is I go down here to length and I set my length to centimeters. Okay. Um, the way to think about the conversion between Blender and TTS is every 100 centimeters is going to equal one inch in Tabletop Simulator. So what we want to end up with is we want to end up with a model that is about two, 250 centimeters tall, which will translate to two and a half inches tall in tabletop sim. Okay? Yep. Doesn't make any sense. It took me far too long to figure that out, how to optimize it. Uh, there might be a better way to do it, but it works. It's easy for me to remember. Huh. Okay. So there's a few things we're looking at here. We have an x-axis. Whoops. We have an x-axis, we have a y-axis, and we have a z-axis in here. And if you've been used any 3D program, you'll be familiar with this. You'll just have to play with the controls to get familiar. Um, but that little circle is our cursor, and the cursor is going to be important. We're going to come back to that later. Okay. So let's go ahead and get Lucy in the scene. So we go up to File, and Lucy was exported as an STL file. Now, you can use an STL or an OBJ. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can use some of these other ones, but you're really only ever going to see STL and OBJ. So we're going to import an STL. And we're going to find it here on my desktop. And Lucy's going to drop in here in a second. There you go. Did I already convert it? No, I didn't. Let's do it again. Is this like slicing software like you do with 3D printing? It will not slice, no. Ah, uh, you okay. can do things like uh, light and animate and composite in this, but it's not for 3D printing. Okay. You can make, make the stuff for 3D printing. That so works. you can yeah. have an animated model in TTS? Yeah. <laughs> cool. 
You certainly okay. could. So Lucy's in here. Where did she go? So Lucy came in, but I can't find her, which often happens. So a little trick is, is on your number pad of your keyboard, if you hit the, the period on the number pad, it'll take you to where she is. And it looks like she might have just imported tiny. So let's see how big she actually is. Ah, she's not showing any mass. Okay. Let's do this. She is open in this other program. Let's close that. And I did have her open earlier, so. Yeah, be kidding me. What's going on here? Might have to grab a different one. Okay, let's do this. Lucy Sorry is a missing her. link. I know, she's right here though. Um, and let's open this up. She's not showing as having any dimensions or anything, so there's something up with that model. I'm going to re-download her real quick. <clears throat> yeah, it's showing as one kilobyte, so something's messed up with her. Let me grab a fresh one. Again. There she is. Okay. All right. So back to the beginning. So now we have our model in here. So let's go check our scene real quick, which is on the right. So we're going to go to scene properties, units. We're going to set it to centimeters. You have to do this one every time you start up. I think you can change the default. I've never bothered to, but it's possible. All right. And so the first thing we actually want to do is we want to get her to about the correct size. So what I did here is on the right hand side there is this transform box and this transform box if we go to the bottom tells us what her dimensions are but we could see she's about 10 times too tall for the scene right she would she would import in at about 36 inches 35 inches which um, actually does work sometimes it wrecks everything but you can do it so we want to rescale her first so if we go over here to the left hand side we can see we have scale we have scale cage we can use either but i'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it okay so if you want to be real precise you can go over here to the scale and you can just start typing in 0.50 right half dimensions like that all the way down and then we, we've managed to have her dimensions um, if we wanted to type in the raw numbers we could but they're not linked so that could get real messy we can mess up our proportions the other way to do it is you can select her and you can go over here, scale, hit that, and you can see it comes up with the <clears throat> this circle here, in which case we can adjust her at multiple different uh, ratios. But I don't want to do just her height, and, and I don't want to do just her width, so that's no good. So I don't want to do that either. So what I can do is have the secondary option of scale cage, which I actually like. So this actually boxes the volume of her. And I can just grab one of these corners and I can just scale her down just like that. She's getting smaller and I'm looking at the Z axis to see how tall she's going to be. So I'm getting her down. She's at about 250. Let's zoom in. Like that. Probably want her a little taller. So I'm going to move her up to about 270. She'll be a little small, but that's okay. Her figure's not meant to be big. And then I can see she's no longer at the origin point of the scene. So I want to adjust that. So the easiest, most precise way to adjust that is you go up here to the X, type in zero, type in zero, and type in zero. And then she's right there. And then to get her back in my view, I'm going to hit period on the um, number key. And it just lets me see her again. Okay. So right now she's looking pretty good, right? We know her size is about correct. It's going to be about what we need to get her in there. But we also know that she is far too many polygons. And I can actually check, check that real quick. So if I go to modeling and zoom in, 
I can look at her, look at her build here and look at her hair, particularly around her head. Like that is just way too many polygons. That's not going to work. Look at her arm. Like she is not going to work in tabletop simulator. So we'll need to take her, take her down to size a little bit. So I'm going to go back to layout and layout and modeling are the two you tend to spend the most time in. Um, so I'm looking at her. I'm like, okay, I got to take her down a notch. So I'm going to show you the first tool that you can actually use to do that. So you can come in here, and if you look on the right, you'll see modifier properties. You'll select that because you're going to add a modifier to Lucy. Uh, modifiers, you can add a modifier, and it actually is a non-destructive way to work on the model. There's like 50 of them. Um, but the one we're going to look at specifically is decimate. So we go in here. And decimate is in the second column, and it is down under D, decimate. And I can see when I look at her, if I look at the face count, it's uh, 398,000 faces. Now, those faces are polygons. They're all triangles, right? So uh, that's got to go down. As a general rule, to get a model down to around the 2 megabyte mark, you need to be around 20 to 22,000 faces. So if we do some math in our head, I can tell you that's going to be around point. It's going to be around six percent of this. Let's do point. Let's go ahead and put in our modifier here, point zero six. And it will take some time to churn. If you have an older system, it could really bog down when you do this. Just so you know. But that took it down to twenty three nine three five, which is pretty close. I'm going to drop her down a little more just so we don't have to. Play the game of will will uh, she import? So I take her down to five percent of original. Now she's under twenty thousand. And when I look at her, I can see yeah, she definitely looks like some uh, Battle of Legends ones models right there. Okay. So she's looking all right. Now this is temporary, so I can apply this permanently if I want by selecting this arrow, hitting apply. But I don't want to. If I want to remove it, I can just hit the X, and then she's back to normal. So that's the nice thing about modifiers. It's non-destructive. Um, there are definitely some modifiers you can turn on, and they will bog your system down. So like if this was a 2 million polygon model, and I typed in like 0.01%, my system would probably catch fire trying to figure that out. <laughs> but uh, for the most part, you'll be OK. So 0 0.05, we know how what our resolution should be. OK, so there she is. So that looks pretty good. So then the last thing we need to do is we need to get her origin point to the correct place. Now there's there's two ways to do this, right? So if we look, if I zoom in here, if I take a little sideways view, you can see her origin point is okay, but it's not great. Her origin point is actually in the middle of the base. I don't want it in the middle of the base. I want it to be on the direct bottom of the model. So this is where uh, I'm gonna show you a couple shortcuts. Uh, remember them, write them down, whatever you want to do, but this is this is how I typically do it. So I'm going to look down here at the base, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the model view. Let's get down here. There we go. And I want the origin point to be on this bottom plane of faces here, right? So not a particular face, but kind of all of them. So I'm going to go up to here, and right now I'm looking, I can select vertexes, which are the individual dots. If I go here, I can select edges, which is the lines, but I want to select the face. So that's the third option. Face select, select that. But if I make the uh, or if I make the cursor go to this face, the center of this face, it's still going to be off because the center of this face is like over here, right? So I want to select all these faces. So this is where a shortcut comes in. So if you hold down Shift G, it's going to let you control what you select. You can also get to it by going through select if you don't want to remember the shortcut. So you want to do select, select similar, and I want to select the coplanar. It's OK. You don't have to know what all these mean. Just know how to do it. So I'm going to select the coplanar. And if we scroll around, you can see I've only selected the things on the bottom, which is exactly what I want. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the cursor. So I want the cursor to be attached to this bottom. So I'm going to do another shortcut at Shift S. I'm sorry, I don't remember where in the menu this is. But when I do Shift S, it lets me, it's going to let me move the cursor to different points. I want to move the cursor to the selected. 
and that's going to put it in the dead center of all those selected faces. So I do cursor to selected, and that's looking pretty good, right? So that's exactly where I want it. Now my cursor is where I want it. Now I need to get the origin point where I want it. So I'm going to go back to layout. Okay. I'm going to select Lucy again, and this time I am going to uh, right click her like this. I'm going to set the origin. I can. I'm going to set it to the 3D cursor. Now, a quicker way to do this is to ignore the cursor thing altogether, and you can do center of mass, and oftentimes center of mass works, but I prefer it to be on the bottom. Um, if you're ever stuck, can't figure things out, right, just right-click the model and do center of mass. So I'm going to do origin to 3D cursor. There it goes. And now it's down on the bottom. So now she's pretty much ready to go. For the sake of peace of mind, I'm going to set her back to zero everywhere. And her position is based on the origin point. So when I set this to zero, you can see she'll be lined up perfectly with the red line here. So she is sitting with her base along the axis of this entire scene, which is great. Okay, so at this point, she is ready to go. Any questions so far? <laughs> nope. Okay. So we're going to export her. So we do File, we do Export, and we want to do OBJ. Wavefront OBJ, go back to that folder I was using. And I'm going to give her a different name, like that. Go ahead and hit Export, and then I'm going to open up my Tabletop Simulator. Go. I'm going to open up the official table. Okay, let's get a map. Okay, so now let's get her in here. In fact, let's get a, another figure in here so we can see how if her uh, her scale is about right. So she's a smaller fighter. So uh, Alice is kind of smaller. So let's put in Alice. Drop off Alice. Okay. So I'll do uh, objects, components, custom. Model, you guys have probably all done this by now. Right click the model, find her. Here she is. Cloud upload, figurine, import, bing. There she is. And it looks like I pretty much nailed her on the first try there. It was pretty good. That's it. All right, so that's the basics of how to get her in there. Um, this works for all of them. Um, you can do a lot of other stuff. Is there anything else particular you want to look at, or do you want me to just start rapping about things I like to do to the models? <laughs> <laughs> Will you actually wrap it? <laughs> Man, nobody nobody deserves to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and they lost viewers. Yeah. And everybody left. Where did they yeah. go? <laughs> yeah, let's go ahead and show them uh, back there in TTS just how to select the color on it real quick because some people may not be familiar with that. Oh yeah, yeah okay. So there's actually uh, there's actually out. there's a couple ways to do color actually. So you can do a color tint like this. So right click color tint. Like that. You can do it another way too though. So you can go in and do custom. <laughs> And you could put in a, a diffuse. So, like, if you go into Microsoft Paint and just make a square of color, um, you could put in the diffuse, and it would just uh, basically make the entire figure that color. I don't know if I have a color chip. Let me, let me see here. Let me see if this works. Probably not. This is a glitter texture I was doing something with earlier. Nope. <laughs> Does not respect the texture, but that's okay. Just makes it all kind of yellowy. Yeah. That's all right. Let me go ahead and get rid of that. And then you can adjust the material too. So let's say I've made her blue, right? And she's kind of a, a dark blue. I can actually mess with that. So right now her specular is white. 
I could make the specular a red. See, she comes out a little different. And it basically means that the light that's hitting the model is now reflecting red rays. Best way to think about it. And I can do that. I can adjust this. If I take this down to like a 0.1, she's going to get very matte. So she's very much more matted colored now. And if I crank this up to like, let's say a solid 1.0, Yeah, let's do that. You can see she gets there. So there's some neat stuff you can do. You can actually get this to kind of look like a bronze color if you really mess with it. So like if I were to pick, let's pick like a something that's kind of metallic already, kind of orangey like that. And then let's go into custom and let's just drop in like a seven value. See, you kind of make her a little coppery colored. So there's some neat stuff you can do with that. Uh, one other thing you can do is, so if we want to look at her collision boxes that are here naturally, you can just take them off a board and see. You can see where the collision box is by where, well, you can see where her collision box is. That's more Alice than her. Let me make a dupe of her. There we go. So you can see where her collision box is by how close you can get to her before the model lifts up. So you can see that's about perfect because the shadow is right up there but you can even fudge that. So I could go in here and do a custom model and put in my own collider. I have a couple that I use. Uh, let's see here, where's my models? 3D models. Let's try this one. Don't update them both. So we can see that kind of works the same, but that's a different different collider. So they each have their uses. It depends on the model, but if you have somebody who has a real long weapon, um, that can be really handy. So let me, where's my miniatures? Miniatures, so like this guy here, he's got this staff, but when he is near somebody, it doesn't actually get in the way, right? So it doesn't knock them around. You can move right through it. It doesn't slow anything down. So that's why you'd want to have like just a different collider that you can use for that. And a collider is just a model that you make. So if you were to go into Blender like this, you would say, I want to make a collider. You could do add, uh, add, add mesh cylinder. And then you just got to scale this cylinder to how big you want the collider. In fact, we can do that. So like if I wanted a real slim collider, I could do this for 100 by 100. Yeah. I'll show you how. I can actually get this to work real fast. Let me do it. to 3D cursor, zero out. Until I've done this a few times. Do a slim collider on one of these. So we'll do a slim collider here. Oh, wrong folder. There we go. So now this one has a slim one. We can see how close she can actually get before she gets picked up. She can actually sit inside another model now and not be in the way. But she's still, the collider's still good enough that it's easy to grab. It's not like it's missing. But she can get right in tight with a lot of the models and they don't knock each other over. So I'm actually going to hold on to that one. That one might be handy. Whereas Alice has a terrible collider. These models are super weird because if I put one of those in there, it will do, I guarantee it'll be halfway into the table. Yep. And that's why origin points and models matter. Okay, so that is that. Now let's actually take a look at the... Um, 
take a look at the actual modeling stuff here and some of the fun, funner things that you can do. Let me get Lucy back. Come on. There she is. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of our modifier. Okay. So just because she comes in like this doesn't mean she has to stay like this. Okay. So you can see the model came in a little messy here. I can actually fix that before I would upload her. So this is the sculpting section of Blender. And this is something I'm learning. Um, there's limits to what you can do if you don't have like a, um, a tablet, a writing, a Wacom tablet or something, but there's some certain, certain things you can do. So one tool you can do is actually smooth. So I will pick a slightly bigger size and I will weaken the strength down to about 20% 20, 20 or so. I'll just take some light passes here and I will fix all those stray polygons that look bad. Just smooth out everything on the skirt like that. Get around to the back. If you do smooth brush at a higher value, it becomes much more of a sculpting brush, but when it's at a light value, it's just kind of a, it is exactly what it, it's exactly what it's supposed to be. It is a smoothing, uh, smoothing thing. And you can see we have some messy, uh, because this was built in a model generator, we got some messy uh, overlays here. I can smooth that down, get it out of the way. We got one here, smooth that out, get that one done. A little bit up there. Get her, so I'll try to get her skirt fixed. It's not working too well. So you can smooth those parts out. You can do some other stuff, like you can grab. So grab can be a useful tool. Um, let's go ahead and do something else here. Let's see if we can do anything with the hair. So you can actually manipulate the hair around a little bit. If I wanted this headpiece to protrude a little more, I'd try to line it up a little bit. Get my circle to encompass just the piece I want to work with. Give it a little pull bit by bit. Get it to where I want it. Work on that. If I want her eyebrow to move up a little bit, I could go in here. Give it little pulls. Try to get the angle right. Give her little pulls upwards. Just moving the polygons around, massaging them to where I want to be. Doesn't look that great, but <laughs> I'm not a real artist, so it's okay. But yeah, so you can clean up the models. You can do a little bit of uh, adjusting to the clothes and stuff. It really depends on how the model is made. Like if there's actual parts inside of the particular pieces. Uh, the other thing that you can kind of do is kind of fun is the pose tool. Now this uh, is a really, really rough rigging. I'll show you what I mean here. So I'm going to get in here. I'm just going to slowly start to move her arm bit by bit don't worry about the bracelets they can come back later there we go real gently it's not perfect you're not going to be able to repose her completely and then the bigger the circle is the more you'll be able to affect when you actually do the movement see I can ever so bit by bit start moving her around to where I'd want her to be just like that and then because we don't want her to have wrinkles I can go in scale down a little bit and just start smoothing out the wrinkles real gently plastic surgery a little bit uh, you can do full rigging in these models um, I am learning how to do it it's pretty it's pretty advanced but just playing with the pose tool, the grab tool, and the the uh, smoothing tool, like you can do quite a bit. Um, big thing to remember is is that there's a strength on these tools. So if I do this at a hundred, like it is just it just decimates everything. So you just want to kind of go light, take light touches at it, and just keep working it, getting it to where you want it to be. Like we can see that this joint messed up back here, so we smooth that out a little bit. Let's fix it. Like that. And then you see I went from her having a downwards facing arm to having a forwards facing arm. It's not quite perfect, but if it's going into tabletop simulator, it's going to get blasted up anyways when it gets uh, downgraded. So you can get away with quite a bit. There we 
go. And then if I wanted to move the actual bracelets, which I can do, first I'm going to delete the core if I can. Can I? Question. It's a good question if I can. Let's see if I can. Just want to delete the uh, the core here. Just want to highlight those, delete the faces until I get through. I think I got through. Yep. So now I just have the ring, and I can actually do this a couple different ways. But <clears throat> what I'll do here is I'm going to go in, and I'm going to highlight all of this. I want to make sure I get all of it. Just sometimes you got to play with the angles. You don't want to grab the thing in the background by accident. Let's get all those bits. Okay. I'm just going to move this over here. Rotate it. And let's rotate it this way. Yeah. Get it over here. And sometimes it is a real challenge to line these things up. So I actually go back to old school and just use the uh, use the manipulation arrows. Get it in here. There we go. Here, okay. And uh, which place was this you uh, got this model originate from? I knew it was one of those uh, yeah. places there. Yeah, this is... Um... Yeah, this desktop, is desktop, desktop hero. hero. Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember yep. which one it was. Okay, I've got a couple people watching on the YouTube stream um, and asking questions. So that was yeah. Uh, these mod they have a limited amount of assets that are free, and you can I mean, but you can design as many as you want with the free assets and download them for infinity. Um, there's no real restrictions on them. Can't sell them obviously, but other than that, you're free to do what you want. And they have asset packs that you can buy to um to get more uh, more assets to deal with. So they're doing a Kickstarter right now. I actually backed it, so I'll be getting my asset, uh, my first batch of assets in about two weeks. So I'll be able to do some modern, more modern models and play with them. But yeah, this is a great place if you don't want to mess with um, trying to find the perfect thing. This can get you close a lot of times. So sometimes close enough is good enough. Um, but yeah, that's basically all I do when I get the models, right? So um, I will bring them in, typically from Desktop Hero, not always. I'll check them out, see if they make sense, like if there's anything particularly broken on them. A lot of times I'll replace the bases on them because I don't like these bases. I don't particularly like the way they import. Um, I like the, the cylinder style like that, and these have a rounded edge. And uh, I'm not as big a fan of that. And I've been doing it long enough that I've figured out kind of the, the perfect base. So let me let me show you what I typically do with that. So I want her to have a different base. So I'm going to go to modeling view. And I can see I need to remove all of this, right? But I want to do it cleanly. I don't want to mess with her feet. Because if we look closely, and this is pretty common, you see her feet are actually inset the face of the base. They're inside the base. So if I zoom in far enough, see there's her feet. So I don't want to mess those up if I can avoid it. So what I'll do is I'm going to use a trick I showed you earlier. So I'm going to select this face. And I'm going to select everything that is coplanar. Coplanar. So now I've got the entire top. And I'm going to zoom in here so we can see that I don't have the shoes. See, the shoes have not been touched. Just the face, the top face of the, uh, of the base there. So I'll do that. I'll hit delete. I just want the faces to go away. Now the faces are gone, and I can see her feet are well-preserved. So then I just need to delete everything else. So I will go up here, and I will do a selection circle instead of selection box. The radius a little bit, and I'm just going to highlight everything down here. Probably do this in two or three steps. Hit delete, faces. I should have... <laughs> my bad. I should have done vertexes. All right, so we're going to delete vertices. 
And I'm actually going to change to grabbing vertices. That way I can get them all. Vertices is like the primus component, right? It's a single mathematical point in space. So if you delete the vertices, it'll delete the things connected to it as well. So delete vertices, go around here, get the other side. Delete vertices. Missed two, missed a couple, get them all. Okay, so now I've got her without her base attached. So I want a fresh base. Let's get a fresh base in here. Um, if I go to object, so no, if I go to layout, I'm sorry. There's really three tabs I use in this. I use layout, I use modeling to mess with faces and vertices, and I use sculpting to do the sculpting that I showed you earlier. Um, Blender has some basic objects that you can put in to the scene which is good because a lot of times that's how these actually start is just a culmination of basic objects, right? So let's go ahead and put an object in. So we have, ob um, here we go, add. So I want to add and I want to add a mesh. And the mesh I want to add is a cylinder. So I add a cylinder. Now it's not the right size, but if I look down here, I can adjust that. So I know from doing this so many times that a good cylinder has about 36 faces. I know the radius, which of course is only half the distance across. The optimal radius is 85. And I know the depth that I like to use is 24. The only reason I'm using those is because I've used them so many times before and it's been successful. You can do whatever you want here. but So I do that. Okay. But now, see, now I have two different objects. I can see them over here. I have Lucy and I have the cylinder. And Lucy is like buried inside the cylinder. So I got to do some adjustments here. So first, let's get Lucy out of the way. Let's just move her up, okay? So I want to get this cylinder, first of all. I want this cylinder to be dead center with uh, on the bottom line there. Now, I know this cylinder is 24 centimeters tall, and I know its center of mass is in the middle. So if I set this to 12, now it's going to be dead on that, that line. You can see it right there. All right, so now I need to get Lucy down onto the base. Now I know my cylinder is 24 centimeters tall, right? I can look down here and I can see 24 centimeter, meter, centimeters tall. So I'm going to get Lucy and I'm going to actually move her downwards. And I could do this by eyeball, which you'll probably do when you first start doing this is just eyeballing it, which is okay. It still works. And I can see the tip of her sandal is inside the base. Right there, and that is okay. I'm going to leave that alone. All right. So now I've got him in the right position. So let me check my model. So when I check Lucy, she looks good, right? Like all of her, well, she almost looks good. She has a stray bracelet. I don't want a stray bracelet. So let me go ahead and get rid of that. Let me do select circle, and I'm going to grab all of these. Now the problem is it only is going to grab the ones that I can see. It's not grabbing the ones behind them, and I want to get all of them, right? So I'm going to zoom in a little bit, get that angle just right. And if I hit Z, uh, I'm sorry, not Z. If I go, yeah, if I go up here, I can go to X-ray mode. It's Alt Z. I got the shortcut wrong. So in X-ray mode, if I select here, it's going to select everything behind it as well. So I'm just going to kind of gently paint over all of these with the selection tool. I'm going to grab them all, just like that. When I look around, I can see they've all been grabbed. I'm going to hit Delete. I'm going to hit Vertices. And now she has one fewer bracelet, because I don't want to spend the time repositioning that bracelet. OK, so now Lucy looks pretty good. Let's look at the base. OK, so when I look at the base, I see I have end gons on the side. I see I have nothing down here. So one thing I didn't, it took me a while to figure out is that anytime you see something like this face here, this face is not going to render in Tabletop Simulator. It'll just treat it like a blank space and you'll see right through the base. So we actually need to give this some triangles. So if I right click, the, if I select the face and right click it, I can do triangulate faces. I'll do that, and then you can see I have all the triangles. And it's going to, Tabletop Simulator will see those triangles and it'll work with them. Now, if I look back at the top, I have to do the same thing here. 
So I'm going to right click it and I'm going to triangulate the faces. And now I have a, now I have a good cylinder for the base and now I have a good model up there. So I've got to do the same thing again. I've now I have to join these together actually. So I'm not worried about origin points yet. I just need to make two one. So what you do is, is you grab the, um, think of it as like a parent child relationship. You start by grabbing the child. And then you're going to hold down shift. I'm sorry, you're going to hold down control and select Lucy. So you have both of them now. And then you need to join them together. So I'm going to see if there's actually a menu for this. Here it is. So if I go to object menu, I can hit join. And now you can see they're all one and the same, which is great. It's exactly what we want, right? When I tab into it, I'm looking at both of them at the same time. They are connected now. Okay, so let's get this uh, let's get this origin point back to where we want it. So I'm going to go ahead and do the thing we did earlier. I'm going to select a face. I'm going to go up here to selection. I'm going to select coplanar, select similar, select coplanar. So now I've got all that. <clears throat> then I'm going to move my cursor by doing Shift S, cursor to selected. So now it's on the very bottom of the base. Going to go back to layout mode. Oh, also the tab button will let you flip between uh, the modeling view and the layout view. Just so you know, that's the if you keep hearing me pop a button, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to right-click this and set my origin to 3D cursor. That way, the origin is always going to be on the bottom of the base. All right, so she looks pretty good. Let's check her check her faces here. So I'm going to decimate her, which we've already done before. So I'm going to go to modifier, add a modifier, decimate, and I can see she has too many faces to make it. So I'm going to do the same modifier we did before. Give it a second. Now I can see I'm under 20,000, and she's ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and export, export OBJ. And then go back to this folder I was using earlier, and I'm just going to call her uh, Lucy TTS underscore two, and hit export. Pop back in here. Let's make a new model. Objects, components, model, bing, bing. Here she is. Let's see this. So she's exactly the same. You can see we actually the see I don't know if we can really see the difference in the skirt that I made. But it's there. We can see her arms in a different position. She has one bracelet now that's kind of haphazardly slapped on her wrist. <laughs> I could have done better with that. And she's got a base that looks more like the uh, standard base from Battle of Legends 1. But yeah, that's uh, if you really wanted to, you could get crazy. Uh, you could get crazy with the posing. Uh, the way Desktop Heroes exports these, like the hair, is actually a separate mesh. So you can, depending on the hair you can get, you can manipulate the hair around. Um, obviously, you can do the accessories. You can do the arms. Yeah, uh, you could get into doing stuff with the legs and the knees and all that stuff. Uh, it's just whatever you want to do. If you get into doing different animals or monsters, you can manipulate their tentacles or whatever you're into i don't judge um yeah so that is kind of it all right any other questions on what we've done or you want me to see it do it all over again from scratch or what would you like nope that was pretty helpful yeah yeah there was actually Big. quite a bit in there that i i learned on that there's some stuff where i was doing some kind of uh Doing it really kind of dirty just to try to mm -hmm. make it look right. Like I've been sticking bases on the tokens and like connecting them. The model and the token is a base there in TTS. Um, so, you know, I've been doing all kinds of weird stuff. That's definitely better there. <laughs> yeah, fortunately, uh, Desktop Heroes puts out some bases that are pretty easy to remove. Um, sometimes you'll get them though, and they're just a straight mess and you just spend a lot of time selecting the vertexes and deleting them. It can get kind of messy. I've had to rebuild some feet before and it's not fun. Um, so 
if you get a decent source to start with, it helps a lot. Like I can do one of these in about 10 minutes now if I have a, if I have a decent starting point. Um, some of the fun tools though are actually the like the sculpting tools. If you start playing with those a lot, um, all right, let me get out of this mode here. No more X-ray. Get that. Come on. You know what it is? The sculpting's flipping out because she's decimated right now. So let me let me turn that off. There we go. Uh, when you get into sculpting, you can do some pretty fun stuff. So, I mean, they have like the grab tool, so you can get in here and just start shifting things around. So, like, uh, for example, I'll do it with like the seam here on the shirt. Just start manipulating that over bit by bit. Just like that. And uh, if really, if you're just willing to like take your time and peck away at it, you can really do uh, some pretty cool stuff. Um, but I always say little little touch, light touches at light strength is the way to go until you're confident that you're going to get the effect that you want to get when you start actually manipulating stuff. One thing that's actually kind of helpful, like uh, when I was making Gretel, um, I made Gretel, I scaled her down to make her small. Let me actually open her up real quick. Let me find her model actually scaled Gretel down to make her real small. And then when she was down there, I realized I had just made like a small adult woman. <laughs> it didn't look like a girl at all. So I had to like go in and like touch her up to like make her have proportions of a child, right? Even though it doesn't really translate well. But like when I did that, I used the grab tool. I used a smoothing tool, things like that to kind of make it work. Uh, but really, if you if you do work with the smoothing tool, that'll get you really far because at higher strength, the smoothing tool actually can like just pound out creases. So like if I look at this crease in the dress right here, if I work at this for a little while, like I can pretty much eliminate it. Just like that, and I've re-sculpted the, uh, the flow of the skirt. Uh, the grab tool I already mentioned, and what was the other one I use a lot? There's some of these I don't, I don't, haven't really messed with very much because I haven't needed to. The pose tool is a lot of fun. Is there anything else? Oh yeah, there's um, where's the cloth tool? Here we go, cloth. This one is weird, but if you have <clears throat> here, the strength so it can be dramatic there we go you can actually apply wrinkle textures to stuff it is resource intensive though so it's one to play with Other than that, there's a lot of just basic modeling stuff, like manipulating faces and doing bevel cuts and all that. But for our purposes, it's not really stuff we get into. So there's no reason to go into it. OK. All right, anything else you'd like to learn? Or does anybody have a model in mind they'd like to? Uh, we could work on it live here, actually, if you'd want to. So if somebody has a character they have in mind and they want to try to figure out something that would work for it, I'd be happy to uh, sit and work through it on Desktop Hero and import it into Blender. Well, I don't think I'm quite ready yet to make a model for Abdul al Hazred. He's the next yeah. one I'm working on. But uh, another time, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll close it out then. Um, you don't have to <clears throat> sit here and watch me do modeling for an hour. <laughs> Thanks, Lavin. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely appreciate this. I learned, mm -hmm. learned a fair bit off of this. Um, and then we'll get the I'll get the link to this, uh, the YouTube version of this posted there, so that some of the ones that couldn't make it tonight can see it. Because I know we had a couple that were asking about that, um, and I got someone. I said someone watching on my channel that just randomly found it. So. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely going to want to be able to go back and reference and go, yeah. okay, this is what you do. Yeah. You know. yeah, it yeah. should be there. 
the, yeah, the, the steps are there. So if somebody's watching and they play it back bit by bit, they'll be able to get through putting one model into yeah. um, into TTS. And I also like mentioned the exact measurement that I use, which I think is probably the biggest thing that no yes. one tells you. Yes, definitely. 